Okay, welcome to uh, the B term, the second half of the fall semester in our online college success course. Um, my name is Dr. Mike Brakey. I'll do more of an introduction in the next video. Uh, what I'm doing with an online class, and haven't done a few of these now with the, the COVID up and down, is I've found that trying to break down the technology wall, the ability to communicate back and forth, um, so you guys can at least log in and see what's going on is the first and most important. Now normally we do this in the class, in fact we usually, after we introduce ourselves and run through the syllabus, we'll go to one of the computer labs at the campus and go through it that way. Um, without that ability, doing it online, to me this is the first and most important step. So I'm going to step through the school website, the various pieces of the website in this first video. I'll try to keep it short, but the beauty of it is that you can pause it, go back, um, play around with getting online. Now, some of you probably are students who have taken classes and maybe online classes already, but some of you may be brand new to the college environment. Um, and so that's who I'm really making this video for. And you may find with some changes in the overall sign-on, if you haven't been um, in school, let's say for the past couple of years, a lot has changed as far as uh, the logon process. So that's what we're going to start with. Okay, so here we go. We're going to do that in the next video. I'll have more of an introduction and step through the syllabus and get us rolling into uh, the class. But this allows me to post it on YouTube, send you guys a link. You click on it and bang, you're at this video. And it seems like the best way to kind of get us um, started on the right foot. So. Georgia Northwestern. The first thing is just to find the home page. So if you Google it, um, you'll know you found the right spot when this page shows up. You always get this and it's probably going to last for the next two or three years at the rate we're going. Um, but the COVID-19, and that's probably why a lot, if not most of you have signed up for an online class, is to avoid uh, the contagion. Um, let's close that. And look at the basic, look at the basic online setup. Okay, so here we are, banners out of the way. And what you're going to find, we'll go into these drop-down menus as we move through the class, what's there. There's a ton of information on the website, and sometimes the hardest part is finding it. So rather than kind of digging around for 30 minutes trying to find where the heck is the class schedule, it's under my resources and down here under schedule. Of course, my head's in the way. And this seems to always happen. <clears throat> my head gets in the way. It's so giant. Schedules and calendars. But instead of doing that, if you're not sure where it is, you can just click in a search and type in schedule or calendar or whatever it is. And that um, speeds up the process. Eventually, you'll find that you know that the resources that you use a lot, you'll know where they are. But that just takes a little bit of time. Look at this. Let me see. Check it out. Put my head on that guy. Oh, no, too small. Okay, anyhow. The links to the places you're going to use the most, we're going to start with those. And there are these three right at the top of the page. And forgive me if I'm looking over one side or the other. Um, I've got a couple of monitor set up so I can bring up these web pages. Uh, so that's why. Let's start with Blackboard. That is where the class itself will reside. So you just click on it. And you're going to get this sign-in process. And hopefully during orientation, you were given the how do I sign in function. You're going to have a username, which is your student email, and then a password, and then a second sign-in, really a third layer, if you will. You're going to get a code on the phone, so your password. And I'm going to show you something. If you forgot, there's a generic password that's set up in the system. So bear with me. I'll come back to that. I'll sign in. And now it's going to say, okay, whatever your cell phone, that's what I would use. There's other ways to get this um, uh, single sign-on authentication. You can do it through email. But if you've got a cell phone, this is the easiest one. You put it in there. you got to click Send Code. A lot of times you go to a web page and it just sends it automatically. So you got to click Send Code. See if you can hear it. 
usually it's instantaneous there we go and it's going to email you that six digit code so bear with me while I look it up There you go. And now here, having not been in class uh, on a college success level this semester with this change, I'm not sure that this is the next page that you guys see. I suspect it is. But if you look at this, you've got um, Outlook. That's your email. We'll come back to that. And then here's Blackboard. What it may do is just take you to a page that looks like this. Okay. And again, for those that have been uh, GNTC before, you're familiar with this. Classes where you are a student. So anything you're taking in the fall should have some representation here. Right? And so I've got a history class. i got a whole bunch of classes. But here's the class we're taking. 23717. That's what's called the CRN, course registration number. You don't really care about that. College 1500 student success. That's us. And so now that you're here, if you click on our class, it'll take you to the home page. Right? And then under the home page is all of the pieces of the class that are going to happen. I have you enter at the home page. Any announcements are there. There's also a link for announcements. I'm going to post the syllabus lessons. Those will be presentations just like this one but utilizing slides that I've built for the class and we'll do those in blocks okay and so to make this fairly short I'm not going to step through the syllabus and the lessons right now we will do that next time but you're here and you can see on the left hand side the different pieces and lessons is where where the magic happens if you will let me show you a class that's going on right now because I'm building this uh, I'm doing this uh, video still August right we don't start till October but my history class is up and running and so it has the same thing different colors right a different banner because it's a history class but under lessons it'll look a lot like this a syllabus the chapter material quizzes and tests um, that we're gonna take and so the different categories you see they're different folders so that's where everything will reside and as we go through those different blocks of the uh, curriculum they'll be put in this lessons piece there's discussion boards right, that we will do because we don't have the chance to interact in class and just some other cats and dogs and again um, as we get to the beginning of class the real introductory video of what's going on I'll step through these in more detail but this was to get you to the blackboard opening page okay so if you have two or three or four different classes, if you notice you've got one open here, if you want to go back to a previous class, there's a drop down menu here and you can pick another one that you're in. Or usually what I do is just click this GNTC home and it takes you back to that opening page. And again, here's all the courses that you may be taking. Okay. Let's go back to that single sign on element and again, yours may or may not take you to this. It may go from the opening school page. You click on email, and it's going to take you to the Outlook system. On mine, I've got this extra step. But once I've signed in, you know, that's kind of the, I guess, the beauty of it. I don't know. The idea is now I've signed into Blackboard. I don't have to sign in again separately to Outlook, which you used to have to do. And it was kind of a pain in the neck. So there it is. There's my email. Now, the thing for students. Let me do. I'm going to log out of both of these. You really don't care about my email. I want to show you what your email looks like if you forgot. I hope you wrote it down and uh, what the password looks like. Let me close out of these. Okay. This is exactly what I wanted. This is the email page. So you get here. And you're like, okay, how do I get into this thing? Every entry page for Blackboard, 
and for Outlook for the email has instructions. Okay? Please be certain you've activated your Okta account. Well, hopefully that was done in orientation um, and it steps you through how you log in. That's what I was talking about. It gives you kind of the description of so your student email and what uh, students usually get wrong. There's uh, uh, the at portion. They'll mess up one thing. So your your name will be like J Doe 37. If it's a very odd name, there's no other students with that name. It may just be M Blankenship with no number. But if you have a common name, um, it's going to be first initial, last name, and probably a number. Right, and then the password. Let me blow this up a little bit. If you notice, your default password is your six-digit date of birth twice with an exclamation point. Now that's something new to students that have been around for a while. It used to be just the capital G N T C and birthday. So now they've added another piece, basically because the password criteria has changed. So you can see there, capital G, NTC, and then month, month, day, day, year, year, right? And you do that twice and finish it with an exclamation point. For your student email, jdo37 at students, plural, dot gntc dot edu. And that's another common mistake. Either not putting the S on student for the uh, email or not doing the capital G on the NTC part. So that's there on that front page. That's why I wanted to show that again. And let's do this just so I can go to the generic Blackboard page and kind of do the same thing. Rats. Here's the thing. The, well, let's, let's just step through it. The email account controls all the other accounts. If you change your password in the email system, it changes it for all three. Email, Blackboard, and the one we haven't talked about yet called MyGNTC. Let me do this. Try one more time. Somewhere on here, they step you through the same set of information. So this online resources, if you're having problems, I'm going to blow this up too, because if you can't get through Blackboard, it's not very helpful. But there is a, uh, a place you can get help in logging in. For you guys, especially being brand new to the school, those that are one of the best email addresses to perhaps write down are these guys online help desk and you can't see it because it's so small but it's it's this it's the name online help all one word at gntc.edu and they are especially at the beginning of the B term, they work until seven, eight, nine o'clock, I think. So if you're having problems, you can get a hold of me, right? or you can uh, contact Online Help, and they're better at fixing things than I am because they they've got the backside. They can fix, change, help with. I forgot my password, all that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. Hopefully that wasn't too confusing. Just jumping around a little bit. There's one other piece to the online system that you may use. Not often, but sometimes. And it's this My GNTC piece. Notice this one doesn't have that single login, that Okta account. So you've actually got a link here. And again, if you forget, the explanation is right there. Notice, just to confuse you, they decided to 
use the same except no exclamation point at the end, right? Uh, email address, capital GNTC, birthday twice. All right. What's in here? Well, your schedule, as you get more proficient with the school and the system, you can actually go in here and register for classes for the spring. But the thing I'd like you to do early on is just kind of um, avail yourself to what's in here. So I think on your screen it'll say student information. Let me see if I can blow this up a little. And just take a look at what's in there and make sure it's accurate. Addresses and phone numbers, email addresses, emergency contact info. If you want to put that in there, that's more critical if you're on campus in case something does happen at the campus, we can get a hold of somebody. Um, but it'll look like this with the phone number. And making sure your email is good. Okay, there's my school email. I'll leave that up for a second. Uh, mbrachia gntc.edu and I will bring up or type up or do something here at the end my uh, personal email you're welcome to contact me that way and uh, my home phone and my cell phone number right and I want that to be part of this video in case you are having problems and don't don't be shy and you know, there's always this hesitancy with newer students to go oh, I'm just pestering the guy look I may not answer the cell phone and I generally don't answer my home phone if I don't recognize the number but if you leave a message I promise I'll get back to you and you can text me just let me know who you are and what class you're in especially as this class just gets going I won't know anybody's names off the top of my head by December I will right? so that's the ways to get a hold of me let me blow that up too one more time okay so there it is there's my school email that gives you one avenue uh, of access to get a hold of me and in fact there's my cell phone number 423-994-4055 I do live in uh, Chattanooga right? so two ways now to get a hold of me right let's go back at the end you can just close these windows right just X out of it but I've found that sometimes depending on what browser you use and I use if you can see it down here Firefox um, if you just close it it can give you troubles when you try to log in again so get in the habit of signing out when you're done and that makes the next login clean uh, you won't get this red banner at the top that says you're unable to log in. If you do see that, what I would do is completely close out your browser and try to go back starting with the GNTC homepage. And sometimes I've seen what works too is if you've got a different browser. So instead of Firefox, um, maybe you use Chrome right or explore or what's it called now edge I don't use any Microsoft stuff so I'm not that familiar yeah that's a picture of me and my sons at an endurance race so let me think for a minute is there anything else the breaking down this first wall of technology for older students that haven't worked with computers a lot this can feel very intimidating don't worry about it you'll get used to it by the time we get into the second or third week of the B term, I guarantee you're going to be finding your way in and around Blackboard without problem. The sign in piece will be an ancient memory. You'll just do it, and your computer will probably remember your password. Don't let the technology intimidate you. For younger students, the technology, you've grown up with it. You're digital natives. But what you don't have, and just a little bit more about myself, and I'll save it for the next video. Yeah, Dr. Mike, right? But my doctorate, my PhD, was in cognitive science, how the brain works. And specifically, I looked at what makes college students succeed or not. One of the things that makes them succeed is time management, having good time management. Older students generally do, younger students maybe not so much. Um, concentration, another word for that being focus, the ability to stay on task. 
And the last one is staying motivated. And guess what? Even though this is a half semester, because of that, the timing is shorter, October to December, but that means the tempo and the amount of material coming at you is twice as much as you would have had had you started in August. It's just the dynamic of that compression. So staying motivated can be difficult. You know, we get through toward the Thanksgiving break, the last few weeks of the semester, you're probably going to be a little tuckered out mentally. And what makes the difference from those that succeed and those that don't, a lot of it comes down to motivation. So I will do my best to make sure what we talk about in this class is relevant because irrelevant stuff tends to wear you out. Why am I learning this? Which adds to a last point. Let me bring this up too. Student success. Yeah, but this course could just as easily been called college or life success because the skills we're going to talk about are the ones that help you in college, that help you in life, that help you with everything. Time management, motivation, concentration, those are three of the most important. And I'm not blowing my own horn, that was just the research I did that other people have looked at and I said, yeah, boy, the folks that can do that generally graduate. You don't have to be the sharpest knife in the drawer to graduate, to get your certificate, your diploma, your degree, but you do have to persist and stay motivated. Because if you quit, you know what the answer is. You get nothing. Okay? So let's not do that. So I'll wrap this one up. Trying to keep them relatively short so you don't fall asleep. And again, with if you have any problems, you now have my uh, school email and my cell phone number. When we get to reviewing the syllabus, I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll divulge my uh, my home phone and my, uh, my personal email. Uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, and we will come back to this and step through all the guts of what's in the college success. Forgive me. They changed the name of it recently. It used to be college success, student success course. Okay, see you in the next video.